Our goal for this video is to get Ember up and running on your system and then make a very, very simple app. So first we'll download Node.js if you haven't already. So you download it and that'll install Node.js and NPM for you. NPM is the Node Package Manager and that's how we're gonna get a lot of the software that we're gonna be using. So first we're going to install using NPM. This is after you've downloaded and installed Node and NPM. We'll install Bower, which is another package manager. And we'll do dash G to install it globally so we can access it anywhere. Now we're going to install Ember CLI. Ember CLI is the command line interface that goes with Ember, and it's a lot more than just a command line interface. It also provides the file structure, the generators, the test harness, the whole add-on ecosystem. So Ember is the framework for what you end up putting online, while Ember CLI is the framework for all the other tools that go in to creating that final product. Now that Ember CLI is installed, let's use it for the first time. So we're gonna generate a new Ember project and we won't be very creative with the name, we'll call it Ember Frontend. So it's gonna create a bunch of files and it's going to start installing the default packages that it's giving us. We'll look at those in just a second, but let's go ahead and see our Ember app in action first. So we'll CD in to the directory that it made, and then we'll type Ember server, or Ember S for short. Now we'll visit our app on localhost 4200. And if you see this page, then it's working. Congratulations. Now it's time to open up your code base in your favorite text editor. So here's our file structure. It's gonna be pretty familiar to you since you've been doing Rails. You've got your app, which contains much of your app separated out into different types of files. So components, controllers, those are different than Rails controllers, by the way. And models, routes, templates. And then you've got all your config, you've got your tests, and then a bunch of configuration files. We'll look at two of those right now. The first is package.json. So this is where NPM goes to know what dependencies that it needs to download. This is the set of packages that comes with Ember CLI by default. So we've got something to help us with Ajax. We've got, of course, Ember CLI itself. We've got things like Babel, so you can write in ES6 almost anywhere in your Ember app. You've got Ember data to help you talk with the server. You've got JS hint and live reload. Those are really useful. QUnit for testing and several other things. You've also got a bower.json file, which does some of your other dependencies. And this is slowly being phased out. They're wanting to get rid of it eventually but it's still useful for things that might not have an NPM package yet. So now that we know the lay of the land a little bit, let's go ahead and make our first customization. So we're going to go and we're going to use the ember generate command or ember g for short, and we're gonna create a route and we're gonna create the application route. The application route just like in Rails, is a little bit special. It's the base route. So that's what's gonna be shown when you are here at the main base page. So one of the files that was generated was the template application.hbs. And HBS is handlebars, and we'll get to that in just a second. But first, it's basically HTML with some extra things thrown in. So we'll go ahead and write some HTML, and then we'll see it displayed on the page, and it reloaded automatically thanks to Live Reload. So these templates, 
they're kind of like Rails views. And Handlebars is kind of like ERB. And what's the closest thing to a Rails controller? It is not, as you might first suspect, an Ember controller. It's actually an Ember route. So the route is more than just this that I'm going to show you now. But one of the most common things you'll do on the route is to have a model hook. And the model hook is the most common way to grab information from your server and spread it to the rest of the app. There are other ways, but this is the conventional basic way. All right, so whatever you return from here will show up as model in our application template. So we can just return, let's start with a sentence. This is not what you would usually return, but I want to show it to you working. And there it's displaying that sentence. You can also return a hash. So this hash will be, we'll have the sentence property and then the sentence to property. And then here, we're going to call model dot sentence, and then we're going to call model dot sentence two, and we'll see that we'll have to close out this H three tag. If we don't, it'll show us a nice error, and it'll show both of those. So this hash is a plain old JavaScript object, and then this dot is saying, on this object, I want what's behind the sentence key. You can also return arrays. So here we'll return an array of just, we'll do some numbers. And we can loop through those arrays in our application template using the each helper. So each model as number. And we'll go ahead and put them in a list. So we will display the number in each list item and delete our old stuff. And then we'll see, got to close out the UL. And then we'll see our numbers in a list. You can also return an array of objects. So off screen, we will put in a bunch of objects that represent uh, cute monsters. Each of them has a name and a level. So we'll go into our template and we'll go ahead and display those. So we'll have the monster.name is level monster.level. And it's displaying perfectly. So this is our first super basic Ember app. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and replace what's in here. We don't want to hard code this data. Instead, we're going to connect it to Rails. I'll see you there.